Today, our virtual bus tour visits the Red Hill Farms district near Jinjin to see how the Rural Water Use Efficiency Irrigation Futures program is making a real difference. Cane Growers ISIS manager Wayne Stanley and ISIS Productivity Limited agronomist Andrew Jakins are meeting on farm with grower Bevan Manderson. Andrew has brought with him a new high-tech device. It's an ultrasonic water flow meter that's taking the guesswork out of one of the trickier aspects of irrigation management. At the pumping shed, he demonstrates how the new water flow meter operates. Currently I'm um, just setting up our ultrasonic flow meter, uh, water flow meter. Uh, the principle behind this is to pick a point on the inlet, inlet side of the, uh, the pump um, where it's not going to be interfered with, the flow's not going to be interfered, you can't get too close to bends or elbows or other joins, uh, so about one-fifth the pipe length away from any of those, those, those actual components to get as accurate a reading as we can on the actual potential flow that's being delivered to this system. Acquired by ISIS Productivity Limited with funding provided via the Rural Water Use Efficiency Irrigation Futures Program, this ultrasonic flow meter uses technology actually more commonly found in a medical imaging centre. The device emits ultrasonic sound waves to peer into the pipe and determine the rate at which the water inside the pipe is flowing. We clamp on two little uh, what they call transducers. Um, uh, they're, they're clamped to the pipe, they're clamped on about a 45 degree angle. You don't put them at the top of the pipe or at the bottom of the pipe where you might get air pockets that could, uh, could influence the, the actual measurement. There's a bit, of, um, a bit of gel goes on those little transducers, this is one of them here, and, and they actually pick up, all water has a, a certain amount of uh, particulate that floats in it and um, this can actually pick up particulate flow in the water, uh, so that then, that then will um, give, you a, give you a measurement of, of actual flows. Accurate data on flow rates is really valuable in helping cane growers streamline their irrigation systems and become more efficient in the way they use both water and energy. This pump's actually not currently operating at the present, uh, but in normal circumstances if it was operating we'd be, we'd be getting a flow that would be measured in uh, either litres per second. Um, there's a few different variances we can measure there. And we can also measure mass flow as well. So uh, the concept behind that is to, to see where losses occur within the system. So we can take this measurement here, we can take pressures within the, uh, in the pump shed itself at varying points on the inlet and out, outlet side of the pump and see where any losses might be occurring in that system. Vice versa, once we get into the paddock, uh, we, can, we can then go up and uh, look at uh, pressure readings taken from the uh, irrigation application equipment, such as centre pivot or so forth, um, and see what losses are occurring between the pump itself uh, and, and the actual delivery, delivery um, method at the other end. As part of the ISIS water use efficiency project, 100 pump audits are being undertaken on cane farms. It's an efficiency drive that has the support of government, cane growers and the milling sector in an all of industry effort. Under the water use efficiency program, that's a collaboration of the Queensland government and cane growers, the organisation, the local sugar industry through the ISIS sugar partnership which comprises a group of uh, cane growers organisation, ISIS Mill and uh, ISIS Productivity Limited have come together and they've recognised that through the water efficiency program uh, we can uh, gain uh, funding to buy apparatus to help the growers understand where uh, they're losing efficiency through either water use or energy use. In a region of moderate rainfall where dry land cane farming is uneconomic and irrigation is vital to keeping the industry competitive, the focus on water use efficiency could not come at a better time. Electricity prices here have doubled in seven years and with growers depending on energy intensive irrigation for half of the water their crop needs, the drive towards more efficient technology makes good business sense. We need to identify the efficiency gains that, uh, that can be found and uh, that's uh, a situation that's going to be relieved by probably uh, changing to low pressure water systems and smaller electric motors and we've actually had growers uh, 
in recent years who have decided themselves to invest in low pressure systems such as pivots and lateral moves and they had factored in the efficiency gains to repay the, the cost of capital. One of those growers is Bevan Manderson, who has upgraded his irrigation system from high pressure water winches to a more energy efficient, low pressure centre pivot irrigator. Spanning 330 metres and irrigating the crop using a single 22 kilowatt electric motor, Bevan's new Bauer centre pivot system is watering about 32 hectares of cane land. At a cost of more than $200,000, it's a major capital outlay, and Bevan was fortunate to access part funding from the Australian Government Reef Program, formerly known as Reef Rescue. The dividend on the investment is being returned by way of improved environmental outcomes. It's cutting down on the energy needed to irrigate the crop, and it's watering the fertile red soil country more gently. Power-wise, you get really good efficiency gains. Not only that, you get a, a lot gentler watering across your farm because you're not trying to put everything on with that inch and a half or inch and a quarter nozzle, whichever you choose to use. It's not all going in one place all the time. It's, it's more even, even water. You can follow the pivot and monitor that it's not giving you excess runoff. You can bring it down to there's virtually no runoff at all. And well, that's the... That's what you're aiming for really, is to stop that run or stop your nutrients running away, stop your water running away <clears throat> and watering your crop at the same time. Farming in hinterland country where strong southeasterly breezes are common, the centre pivot system is helping Bevan conquer a variety of challenges. Watering the crop with low pressure overhead emitters has all but eliminated the spray drift issues of the water winch system. The automated centre pivot also gets around the farm much faster, requiring only a fraction of the labour that's needed to shift water winches. Faster and more reliable hydration also reduces the risk of the crop becoming stressed through lack of soil moisture. And basically you are up shifting winches uh, every two, three hours, sometimes stretch out to five. Lucky you get a longer one. But it meant uh, if you wanted to irrigate at night, it was virtually impossible. And with the prevailing winds being southeast most of the time, you couldn't, the winds blow straight up and down the rows. And uh, in some years where it just, just blows and blows, it was nearly impossible to water. You couldn't, you couldn't get anything done. I've got extra time to go and move irrigation in other areas now this thing tends to look after itself once you get it going. It's not just what you save in money, it's what you save in, in energy and, and you do get a lot more sleep with it too. Despite concerns the centre pivot system might have difficulty walking across the contoured terrain, so far it's handling the job with relative ease. Time-lapse imagery shows how spans of the irrigator walk across the hilly landscape in computer-guided steps, powered by wheel drive electric motors. It walks over this country like it was dead flat. There's really no problems with it. The only problems we've come up with has been the variation in pressures. It hasn't been unsolvable. It's just a matter of trying things and testing and, uh, and learning to work with it, yeah. As the pivot moves uphill, greater pressure is required at the pump to maintain consistent water application. Then as it moves down the slope, the pressure needed to maintain a consistent flow through the emitters is reduced. Given that the goal is to maintain a uniform application of water during any irrigation event, an engineering solution was needed in the pumping shed. At the end of the day we ended up with the, uh, a variable speed drive that would change the speed of the motor to wherever the pivot was on the farm. The problem we had once we installed the variable speed, there was nothing to tell it, tell the motor where the pivot was. It didn't recognise it was down in the flat or it was up on top of the hill, so it was a case of having to manually operate it. The solution is a telemetry system, linking a pressure sensor at the end of the irrigator with a variable speed control unit in the pumping shed. 
It allows the speed of the pump to be ramped up or down as required, maintaining an even 20 psi at the far end of the irrigator. The pump is a uh, 22 kilowatt and it runs between 15 hertz and about uh, 27 at the top of the hill, which is roughly 15 amps and 27 amps. As at the moment it gets to the top of the hill, it's sitting on around about that 27 amps. At the moment it goes either side of it, it starts to drop down and drops down all the way into the flat and then starts to build up again. And it does it all automatically, which is proving to be really, really good. It's early days yet, but Bevan Manderson is confident the centre pivot system will pay for itself in the long term with efficiency gains. In the meantime, it's making the process of farming easier with each irrigation event, getting water to the crop faster, using less energy, and in a way that's kinder to the environment.